Welcome to Full Spectrum Science and this month's special Pride edition, all about rainbows. I'm your host, Ron Hipschman, and I'm really excited today to be giving you this special presentation about the science and art and culture of rainbows. So let's get right to it. And what better place can we start than with the Pride flag? Artist Gilbert Baker was primarily responsible for the Pride Flag's design. Baker served in the U.S. Army from 1970 to 1972. He was stationed as a medic in San Francisco at the beginning of the gay rights movement. In 1974, he met Harvey Milk, who three years later challenged Baker to come up with a symbol of pride for the gay community. The original gay pride flag flew at the San Francisco Gay Freedom Day Parade celebration on June 25, 1978. He also joined the gay drag activist group Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, who we've had the pleasure of hosting several times at the Exploratorium. The original pride flag had eight stripes, with each color having different meanings as Gilbert Baker envisioned here. The original flag was simplified to six colors. Because of the unavailability and expense of hot pink fabric, that color was dropped. And the desire to have an even number of colors in the flag caused the turquoise stripe to be dropped as well, giving us the flag we're all familiar with today. There are other, version, other versions of the flag too. This is the Philadelphia pride flag. Noting that queer people of color are often not fully included in the LGBT community, the city of Philadelphia added two colors, black and brown, to the pride flag in their honor. This is the flag we fly over the Exploratorium at Pier 15 on the Embarcadero during Pride Month. This is the bisexual pride flag, designed by Michael Page, the flag brings visibility to the bisexual community, showing the overlap of the stereotypical colors for boys and girls. Here we have the intersex pride flag, designed in 2013 by the organization Intersex International Australia. This flag intentionally features non-gendered colors that celebrate living outside the binary. Combining the previous two, the pansexuality pride flag was created on the web in 2010. This flag has colors that represent pansexuality's interest in all genders as partners. The pink represents women, yellow, non-binary and gender non-conforming people, and the blue is for men. Of course, there's the bear brotherhood flag and the leather, latex and BDSM pride flag. Like the pansexuality flag, the asexual flag was created in 2010. It was inspired by the Asexuality Visibility and Education Network logo. It represents many race identities, including graysexuals, the fluid area between sexuals and asexuals, and demisexuals, people who don't experience sexual attraction unless they have an emotional connection with their partners. Here, we have the transgender pride flag and the polyamory pride flag, featuring the symbol for the infinite number pi, which shares the first letter of polyamory. This flag celebrates the infinite selection of partners available to polyamorous people. The letter is gold to represent the emotional attachment we have with others as friends and romantic partners, rather than just our carnal relationships. And one of my favorites, the gay pride flag of South Africa. Moving to the, from the pride flag to nature, surely one of the most amazing displays is a rainbow during rain showers. The optics of light passing through a raindrop can be complicated. Light entering a raindrop from the sun displays a variety of refractions and reflections. Quite complicated and beautiful. One thing this ray tracing diagram does not show you is where the colors come from. To see that, let's look at a simpler optical device, a prism. The rainbow separation of colors is created by an optical phenomenon called dispersion. For reasons I won't discuss here for brevity, you can see that in a glass prism, blue and violet light are bent more than red light. The same thing happens in a liquid drop of water. Let's just look at one ray of light 
passing through the drop. A ray of light from the sun hits the surface of the drop. Here, it refracts and is bent into the drop. The separation of the colors created by dispersion starts here too. Hitting the back side of the drop, the light reflects, and since the back side of the drop is curved, the light is focused. Note that the spectrum is turned around after the light comes to a focus and then diverges. Lastly, the beam hits the edge of the drop and refracts again into the air. Now, if we measure the angle between the incoming ray of sunlight and the outgoing rainbow, it's always 42 degrees. That just has to do with the optical geometry that we've been discussing. So a rainbow always describes an arc with a half angle of 42 degrees. Now, if you remember the previous photo of a rainbow, red is seen at the top of the bow and violet is seen at the bottom of the bow. Yet, here you see the violet on top and the red on the bottom of the exiting light. If we look carefully at the angles, though, you'll notice that the violet light is at a lower angle and the red light is at a higher angle. So on the ground, you'll see the red up higher than the violet. Let's look again. The primary rainbow, the brighter one, always has red on top and violet on the bottom. Let's talk about that secondary rainbow you see dimmer and further out. The secondary rainbow is created by a two reflection path inside the raindrop. Light from the sun strikes the drop, this time in a different place. It reflects, reflects, reflects again, and finally refracts out of the drop. Note that because there are two reflections, the spectrum is reversed twice inside the drop. This time, the violet is seen higher up than the red. So the secondary rainbow has the colors reversed. Let's take another look at both of those paths and how they exit the raindrop. If we combine the one reflection and two reflection rainbows together, we get the result you see here producing the double rainbow, one lower than the other. Notice that the colors of the primary and secondary rainbows are oppositely colored. And if we're gonna talk about double rainbows, we have to bring in Yosemite Bear. On January 8th, 2010, in one of the internet's earlier viral videos, the world was given a gift by Yosemite Bear. Probably no one has had such an emotional reaction to a double rainbow. Unfortunately, we lost Paul Bear Vesquez this last May. We'll definitely miss him. Let me play you a portion of his world famous video here. Whoa, that's a full rainbow all the way. Double rainbow, oh my God. It's a double rainbow all the way. Whoa, that's so intense. Whoa, man. Whoa! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh, oh my God! Whoa! Oh! oh wow! Woo! Yeah! Oh my! Oh my! Oh my God! Look at that! It's starting to even look like a triple rainbow. Oh my God, it's full on double rainbow all the way across the sky. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. What does this mean? Oh. Oh my God. Oh. Yosemite Bear's video has even inspired others to create pieces made in tribute, like this music video by the Gregory Brothers that I'll play you a piece of as well. Whoa, that's a full rainbow all the way. Double rainbow, oh my God. Double rainbow 
rainbow. It's a double rainbow all the way down. It's a double rainbow all the way down. Oh my God, what does this mean? It's so bright, so vivid. Double rainbow, double rainbow. It's so dense, dense. What does this mean? It's starting to look like a triple rainbow. That's a whole rainbow man. Now, rainbows are really complete circles, but we only see part of the circle from the ground. From an airplane, the circle can be complete. It's 84 degrees in angular diameter. With the sun at your back, the rainbow has a half angular diameter of 42 degrees. Since it's always seen opposite the sun, the height of the rainbow depends on the height of the sun. When the sun is high in the midday sky, the rainbow will be low, as you see here. When the sun is low, near sunrise or sunset, the rainbow will be high in the sky. Rainbows have inspired artists since time immemorial. Here is Landscape with Noah, painted circa 1803 by Joseph Anton Koch. Noah builds an altar to the Lord after being delivered from the flood. God sends the rainbow as a sign of his covenant. I would have hoped that God could have found a better parking spot for the ark, rather than leave it teetering on the edge of the cliff, as you see here. From the Tate Gallery, we see Salisbury Cathedral from the Meadows. This was painted by John Constable in 1831. The rainbow is a symbol of hope after a storm. I find this one a little dark. A more modern, untitled rainbow by Peter Coffin in 2005 offers us a brighter vision. 33 photos of rainbows strung together to form a magnificent spiral. The Exploratorium is not immune to the rainbow's effect. Here, a large wall has been yarn bombed by our Exploratorium knitting group, String Theory. We make rainbows every sunny day in, in the Exploratorium. Here's a time-lapse of artist Peter Stevens' spectral meadow throughout the day. You can manufacture rainbows wherever there are drops of water and the sun is at your back. Here we see San Francisco's fantastic fireboat putting on a fine rainbow display seen from the Exploratorium's Fisher Bay Observatory at the end of Pier 15. This was at about 3 p.m., so the sun was high in the sky and the rainbow was therefore fairly low. The Oklahoma City Fire Department is making a beautiful rainbow as they test their hoses and pumps. If you don't have a fire truck, you can still make a rainbow at home on a sunny day with your garden hose. I made this one while washing my car. Here's an activity for you from our Science Explorer book where you can make rainbows in your home with an audio CD. Remember those? It's also on our website at the URL on the top of the slide. Rainbows have an important place in popular culture, in addition to Yosemite Bear. Leprechauns are solitary creatures who spend their time making and mending shoes and have a hidden pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. If captured by a human, they often grant three wishes in exchange for their freedom. Even extraterrestrials are into rainbows. This is, spoiler alert, the end of E.T., the extraterrestrial. I can only guess that they're releasing a shower of water drops as they depart the Earth soon after sunset. Unicorns, being the magical creatures we know and love, are for some reason associated with rainbows. Behind the unicorn there, that must be a secondary rainbow because violet is on the top and red is on the bottom. Or, could be the artist is just not familiar with the physics of rainbows. 
This is an unusual one. Here we see Thor with an arrow-ridden shield and a lightning-struck AK-47 riding a unicorn propelled across the face of the moon by a wet-farted rainbow. Again, the artist has added a personal interpretation to the order of colors in the rainbow. I have no idea where this came from, and I'm not sure I want to know. The Magical Unicorn provides us with yet another rainbow-inspired product in this commercial for the Squatty Potty. This is where your ice cream comes from. Oh. The creamy poop of a mystic unicorn. Totally clean, totally cool, and soft serve straight from a sphincter. Mmm, they're good at pooping. I encourage you to look up this amazing commercial. You owe it to yourself to see the whole thing. Maybe the funniest commercial ever produced. This gets my award for the best marketing use of a unicorn. Skittles extensively uses the rainbow in its marketing. And even the Exploratorium's original logo included rainbows, but for some reason in the wrong color order. Hmm. A closing thought from an actual fortune cookie I received. If you want the rainbow, you have to tolerate the rain. Thank you for viewing this special pride edition of Full Spectrum Science. Rainbows, presented by the Exploratorium in San Francisco. This program, like all Exploratorium programs, is only possible because of donors like you. We know that this time is challenging, but if you can, help us keep educational content like this free and accessible to all by donating today at www.exploratorium.edu connect. Thank you.